Hey guys, I am going to be talking about 10 tips for brand new teachers. And while this title is for brand new teachers, I do think that these tips will help veteran teachers or any other teacher as well. So definitely don't just click off if you're not a brand new teacher. I am Nikki and I am going into my ninth year teaching. So I do consider myself to be a veteran teacher. I know there's plenty of teachers that have been teaching way longer than I have, but I think eight years is pretty good. I do remember my first year teaching and I will tell you right now that it was terrible. It was really, really bad, guys. And I want to try to help you not have such a train wreck of a year. Just remember that we've all been there. Every single teacher that you meet, every single one of us has had that first year and some of us had better first years than others. I do not think I was prepared for my first year, and I think that these tips would have helped me so much. That is why I have chosen these specific 10 tips for you today, because if I had known these, my year may not have been as bad as it was. And I do wanna record a video soon on my first year teaching, my first, let's say my first half year teaching was terrible. My second half was amazing, but I want to tell you guys that story. So definitely subscribe to my channel so that you can hear all about my first semester teaching. It was bad. It was, it was really bad, guys. So watch this video, take these tips to heart, do them so that you don't end up in the same boat that I did. Let's get into it. All right, our first tip is to make sure that you ask all of the questions. Do not be scared to ask anything. There is no such thing as a stupid question. I promise we've all been there. We've all asked those questions before. Find someone who you mesh well with and ask all those questions to. If it's an admin question, walk up in there and ask the question. You wanna be as prepared as possible for that first day of school. You don't want anything to be a surprise. Write your questions down, ask them to the appropriate people and get those answers. Ask the questions. Tip number two is to avoid all of the negativity and find your people. There is so much negativity. I remember way back when I was doing my practicum hours and I went into the lunchroom and the teachers were in there, they were just being so negative and I'm here and I'm so excited because I'm doing my practicum. I'm still in school to become a teacher. I can't wait to get my own classroom. And I go into the lunchroom and these teachers are just talking about all of the negative things. They're talking bad about their kids. It was so terrible to listen to. I knew I needed to just get out of there as fast as possible. Just make sure that if you have some people at your school or some other teachers that are being super negative. Just avoid them at all costs. Find your people. Find the people who are going to bring the positivity into every single day. You do not want to go into school every day and just hear all that negative crap because guess what? There is a lot of negative stuff that you can complain about. There's stuff that we can complain about anywhere, anytime, any day, any job, right? But there is so much positivity in teaching. So go in there and be the positive person that you are and just don't surround yourself with negativity. Just don't. Okay, these next three tips kind of go together, but they are three separate tips. The third tip that we're gonna talk about is to make sure that you have a classroom management plan set into place. This is the one area that I had no idea about before entering my first classroom. I don't know what happened. I don't know if there just wasn't a college course. I did take a pretty quick 17 month master's course to get my master's in education and I did not learn anything about classroom management. I did not even know classroom management was a thing. I had no idea that I needed to set up a classroom management plan. I had no idea how to set up a classroom management plan. It was 
it was bad. I can't sugarcoat it. I did not have a classroom management plan set up. I had no idea how to put a classroom management plan in place. And so my first half a semester was terrible. You have to have a classroom management plan. If you don't know what a classroom management plan is, I need you to start Googling it now. I need you to reach out to a fellow teacher, to someone you know at the school, to anybody. Reach out to me if you don't know what a classroom management plan is. And let's get one written up for you. I know I want to start writing mine up for next year soon. And as soon as I start doing that, I will be sharing it with you guys. I will type it up. I will share the document. I do not believe in keeping things to myself. If I create it, I will share it. Just make sure that you have something set up. Most of the time I do a PowerPoint and then we go through that PowerPoint the first couple of days of school so that students know exactly what they are supposed to do. If they don't know what they're supposed to do when they walk into your classroom, they're going to do whatever they want and it's not going to be good. If they don't know how to raise their hand or how you want them to ask to go to the restroom, they're just going to walk out of your class. Like they're not going to know what to do or they're going to yell at you or they're going to yell out because you haven't told them exactly how to ask to use the restroom. You have to tell them how to do stuff like that. You have to set up the routines for every single little tiny thing that they are going to be doing. This is what you should be spending your pre-service hours doing. You should not be spending your pre-service hours making your classroom look beautiful. Pinterest worthy classrooms are not going to help you have a great school year. It's, it's not going to help whatsoever. You need to make sure that you are spending your time setting up that classroom management plan and being prepared to teach those routines to your students. This is a topic that I want to focus on so much on this channel and I could talk for hours. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the next tip before I make this video too long. Just make sure you have a classroom management plan set into place. All right, tip number four kind of goes with the classroom management plan, but it is a classroom management strategy. Make sure that you do not negotiate with your students. This is huge. This is something that I've seen a lot lately, actually, is students want to try to argue with you or negotiate with you or try to get you to change your mind about something that you have said. No, there is a difference between having a conversation with your student and negotiating with your student. So I make it very clear at the beginning of the school year, if they feel like something that I've said is wrong or it's not fair, that I will not argue with them. I will not negotiate with them during class. If they would like to talk to me, they can talk to me during recess or during lunch or at another time, but they are not allowed to try to negotiate with me during class, especially in front of other students, because as soon as one student gets their way, then you've lost your respect with all of the other kids. What you say, you need to hold true to. Of course, if you make a mistake, you can fix that, but you don't need to do it right then and there. You can do it later. You can pull that kid aside and you can fix it, but do not negotiate in front of any of the kids. Tip number four, build relationships with your kids. You've got to have relationships. Relationships are what drives your school year. I'm not saying to be best friends with your kids. Absolutely do not try to be friends with your kids, but you have to build relationships. If you don't have relationships with these kids, then they are not going to do anything that you want them to do. You're not going to be able to get them to perform well on their tests. You're not gonna be able to get them to want to do the work that you're giving them because they just don't care about you. And if they don't care about you, they're not gonna care about your class. So make sure that you are building those relationships with them the best that you can. It's going to be those kids that you have the hardest time building a relationship with that are going to need your relationship the most. You may think that they absolutely hate you. I promise they do not. They need you more than the rest. Make sure you're taking the time to build those relationships. If you want some tips and advice on relationship building, just let me know in the comments and I will film a video on that. Tip number six, make all of the mistakes. Don't be scared to mess up, guys. I mean, everyone messes up. Everyone makes mistakes. And when you make a mistake, just acknowledge it. 
just acknowledge it. Let your class know, hey, I made a mistake. Everyone makes mistakes. They're going to feel better about making mistakes if they see you make a mistake and you acknowledge it and you fix it. Or if they see you learning something, they're going to know that that's how they learn. They are going to follow your cue. So if you make a mistake and you acknowledge it really well, that's how they're going to do it. If you make a mistake and you have a full-on temper tantrum, guess what they're going to do? They're going to make a mistake and have a full-on temper tantrum. So just make sure that when you're making your mistakes to do it graciously. Because guess what? You're going to make mistakes. We still make mistakes. I still make mistakes. I'm going into my ninth year of teaching. And I know I will make a million and one mistakes. Every single mistake that we make, we learn from and we don't do it again, right? So make those mistakes and do not put so much pressure on yourself. Do not commit to extras. Your very first year of teaching is going to be difficult. I am not going to sugarcoat it for you. It is not going to be easy and you do not need to be taking on all of this extra stuff. Do not sign up to teach a sport. Do not sign up to teach a club. Do not sign up to do anything extra that you don't have to do. You need to take this year and you need to focus on your classroom, your classroom management, and just really focusing on getting your organization skills under control and how you want to be a teacher. You're literally learning how to be a teacher your first year of teaching. You don't learn how to be a teacher in college. I don't care what they say. I don't care how many years of college you have done, how many extras you have done in college, how many times you have been in a classroom. None of that matters. You do not learn how to be a teacher until you walk into your very first classroom and you start teaching. And then from there, you learn and you get better and you make mistakes. And you need this very first year for that. Do not take on anything extra that you don't have to take on. Tip number eight is to make sure you have snacks and water. This is so important and I know it seems so silly, but you will sometimes not get a break. Specials will be canceled. Something crazy will happen. You'll have to do recess duty or something will happen where you have to like sit with a kid over lunch or you never know what could happen. So just make sure that you have lots of water in your classroom. Make sure that you have some snacks just in case you don't get a lunch because guess what? It does happen and you want to make sure that you eat and drink. It's that simple. Tip number nine is do not reinvent the wheel. This one is going to go a lot with like stop trying to be extra. There is no reason to be extra. I don't know. I'm not that extra teacher. When you walk into my classroom, my walls are not going to be Pinterest worthy. There's not probably not going to be much on them at all unless it's something that we've done in the year and we've put up on the wall ourselves. I do not waste my free service hours decorating my classroom. I don't. I use it to look at the curriculum. I use it to write my classroom management plan. I use it to type up things. I use it to get myself ready for the school year. And decorating my classroom is not one of those things. Um, so, sorry, I just got off on a little bit of a tangent there. Hmm. All right, let's get back to don't reinvent the wheel. When I'm saying don't reinvent the wheel, I'm saying that use your resources. Use your teammates, especially the teachers that have been there already. They have great resources and usually they will help you and they will share. Hopefully you have a great team that is willing to share and willing to give you whatever they've got because there's really no reason to hoard your things. So use the resources that are out there get on teachers pay teachers google stuff do not reinvent the wheel because you don't have time for that you need to be focusing on your classroom and your kids our last tip is tip number 10 and this one is to just make sure that you are taking time for yourself please please do not let this year consume you try your best not to take work home. If you need to take a little bit of work home, that's okay, but try your best to leave work at work 
and spend time with your friends and family outside of work. You've got to make sure that self-care is a priority or you are going to end up breaking down in the doctor's office like I did. You don't want that. It was a mess. I really need to film my first year video. Let me know if you are interested in that. But yes, just please, please, please make sure you are taking that time for yourself. Don't let this year consume you. If you need help, guys, if you need help, please ask for it. Go to your admin, go to your teammates, find someone on that campus that is going to be your rock and that is going to be someone who's going to help you because I can't stress it enough that your first year teaching is going to be difficult, but it's going to be amazing. You are going to learn so much about yourself. You are going to learn so much about teaching in general. You are going to just start off on this journey to become the very best teacher that you can be. And that first year is so necessary. It is literally like, what did our parents used to say? Where like, they like, you either like swim or drown or like they throw you in the river and like, like, I'm sorry. That's what this is. You literally just get thrown in and hopefully you have some swim coaches or some amazing coaches that are going to help keep you above water, but there is no guarantee on that. You, you've got to just make sure that you are focused on your classroom and learning as much as you can learn this first year of teaching because your second year of teaching is going to be so much better then your third and fourth and all the way down the line, you are going to be so much better every single year. And I hope that you love teaching as much as I do. Just keep in mind that I had a terrible first teaching experience and now I'm about to go on my ninth year teaching. It is summer vacation and I cannot wait until the school year starts again because I love my job. I love teaching. And I want to share that with you guys. Those are my 10 tips for you, for you new teachers. And hopefully veteran teachers, you found something useful out of this as well. If you need anything from me, please reach out. If you want some help with the classroom management plan, if you want whatever you need, just let me know and I will do my best to help you. Make sure that you like, comment, subscribe to my channel. And if you know a new teacher, Please share this video with them. And yeah, I will talk to you guys later. Bye guys.